What's going on everyone? So welcome back to the channel. We're here with another episode with the R1. So if you are new and just finding this video, um, basically I had a wreck uh, probably about a month ago actually. Um, a month maybe tomorrow where I totaled my 2022 R1. Uh, I was able to get a bunch of parts off of it and we put it, um, we've been rebuilding a new 2020 R1. Well not new but um, you know new to the garage so we've been swapping out you know a lot of the parts getting as many uh, parts that we were able to take off that were still good getting them installed um, so that's basically a little catch up if you like I said are new just catching this video um, so let's check out what's going on with the bike All right, so we got the bike prepped for this video. Um, as you can tell by the title, we're going to be removing the intake flap. Um, just, uh, you know, I was in the process of swapping the windscreen back over to a Puge rather than the stock. Um, and I figured, hey, why don't we try to tackle this job? Uh, make a good video for you guys. Maybe help you out if you this is something you wanted to do on your own. Um, so let's see where we're at with the bike. Uh, we got the Q3 Plus tires installed front and rear. Um, we did center pads for the front. Um, we did put the speed bleeders in. Um, we got new Graves diamond frame sliders. Um, we also had to get another uh, GB Racing uh, stator cover as well. Uh, we got the Graves gas cap, the tech spec tank, uh, tech spec snakeskin tank pads. Um, we also got our Litex back on there from the other bike. Um, just cleaned them up, they look really good. Everything's working well. Um, some new Evotech spools since uh, the ones are pretty much shredded from the accident. Um, new Rage Cycle Fender Eliminator Kit, still waiting on a smoke tail light from my buddy at JL Designs. Um, let's see, got the Graves exhaust. I think I showed you that in the previous video. My favorite exhaust for this bike sounds so good. Um, these covers did make it a little scuffed up, but whatever. Um, we got our cool little light tech oil filter plug. Um, I haven't swapped over the rear sets yet, even though they're in good condition. It's just a little bit bigger of a job than um, I'm really willing to tackle right now, especially since I'm healing from that crash. Um, let's see, there's that other Graves diamond frame slider. Um, we did get the Evotech weighted bar ends uh, back on there as well. These things are amazing. They reduce a lot of vibration. Um, these are coming off. These are those AS, uh, these are the <laughs> Amazon special um, levers just while ASV was repairing my levers. So these are going to come off. We're going to throw the ASVs back on. Um, other than that, not much else since the last video. Um, we did put a new featherweight lithium ion battery in the bike. Uh, definitely saves you a ton of weight. Um, other than that, I don't really think of anything else that we've done so far. Um, we're going to be doing a Blinker Genie install. Um, but before we did that, we're going to rip off the nose. We're going to rip off the front. I've actually never done this job before, so just stick with me. Um, it might be a little bit long of a video, but I'm looking forward to learning. Also looking forward to hopefully make a very detailed, um, helpful video for you guys. Um, and I want to go to the workbench and show you a few things real quick. All right. So, um, in terms of parts that we weren't able to salvage, um, this is the GB racing, uh, stator cover for the R1. Um, I tried to clean it up as much as I could. It's not even, that's just like a little dent. Um, it's really not um, damaged in any way, just cosmetically doesn't look the best. So um, if you're interested in uh, maybe grabbing this guy for me, um, hit me up on Instagram, Motovice Official. Uh, we can work out something. Maybe you have a track bike, you don't really care, um, you know, about the looks. So hit me up about that guy. And then for the, the uh, diamond sliders from Graves that I had originally, um, the one on the left took the most brunt and it's definitely really scuffed up. Um, 
for me, I don't know, I'm OCD, so <laughs> uh, cosmetically, I wanted to get new ones, but hey, these are fully functional. Uh, comes with all the bolts and screws. The one for the right came out pretty much untouched. There's like a little, you can see right there, like a little dent. Nothing crazy. Um, also comes with the original mounting hardware, as you can see. So like I said, if you are interested in picking these up, just hit me up on Instagram, Motovice Official. Um, we can work out a little deal um, to where, you know, you guys can get these parts probably at a really um, cheap price since, I mean, I have nothing to do with them really since I already got replacements. So let's go over back to the bike. All right, so as I mentioned earlier, um, if you are new to the channel, definitely check out the playlist that I'm gonna be putting up in the top right of this video. Um, it's literally, I think, I don't know, we're at 16 videos um, of building an R1, putting a bunch of parts on. So um, if you want any ideas for your bike or if you want any help with maybe an install, I've really put a lot of effort into, you know, make sure that, um, you know, I, de I um, display all the details of putting the parts on, um, any torque specs, stuff like that. So um, definitely check out that playlist that I linked in the top right, help you out. But for today's video, um, yeah, we're gonna be diving in, taking out that intake flap. Uh, never done it before, so it might be um, a little bit longer of a video, but like I said, with uh, a lot of my other videos, try to be as detailed as possible and really show you every step of the way to help you guys out. Um, I only know of one other video on YouTube right now um, that shows an R1 with it being done. Um, so uh, hopefully, you know, with their video and my video, you guys can get it done yourself, not have to pay a shop to do it, and I hope it won't be too hard, so. And one last thing um, before we get into the job, um, just wanted to, to mention to you guys, if you see any of, the, any of the parts that are on my bike that are installed, um, if you're interested in them, I do have them categorized in the description below um, with links to each of those parts. So if you see something you like, definitely go check it out. Um, other than that, now let's get into the job. All right, everyone, so um, me, I have my mirror, uh, windscreen off already. Um, if you haven't taken it off before, it's not that difficult. It's literally four um, screws right here that go into some rubber grommets. Um, you also kind of have to pry down from the sides right here and you kind of pull it out. Um, it does align here in the center as well. Um, and I'm in the middle of swapping mine already, so that's why it's off. And then for your mirrors, um, there's literally two bolts on the bottom on each side. Um, and this hole is where your turn signal connector goes and then feeds down underneath the side panels. Um, so before we can slide this off, uh, I'm gonna pull you guys around to the side to show you which Allen bolt allows you to slide off your front cowling. All right, so before you get access to this area, you do need to pull off the um, first uh, gray panel that covers the inside portion right here and the outside panel um, that's right underneath it and then you can access this whole entire section. Alright so now that we're on the, the side um, of the front cowling this bolt right here um, it is a four millimeter allen this is the one you're going to need to remove from each side. There are some Phillips um, screws right here here and looks like that's uh, another Allen right there. Um, so make sure it's the Allen right here and just ignore these two Phillips screws. Um, just take a four millimeter. This is a little small 90 degree ratchet, kind of helpful in tight spaces. So I already loosened it, but just want to show you where it was. So I'm gonna take that bit. I'm gonna do the other side real quick and then I'll show you how to take off your front cowling. All right, so now that the two bolts holding the front cowling in are off, um, this will pretty much lift up, and then you're gonna go down with it. And that's, when you push down, that's what's going to um, relieve these from the mounting points right here. So, now it's off, and there's your nose section. So, now looking at the front of the bike, this is actually the, I believe it's a vacuum solenoid, so um, Vaculine basically pulls up um, on a little lever that's inside your intake tube right here. And that's what lifts your intake flap up and down upon, um, you know, throttle open or close. So um, we're not gonna touch this just yet. We are gonna replace it just so we don't throw a code. Um, it will be in there kind of moving up and down, but it's not really gonna block airflow like 
um, the flap that's in um, this section itself. And another thing I would suggest doing before getting into this job is just taking pictures of um, what the wiring looks like, where each thing might go. Um, so I'm gonna try to get close up of the dash, um, any connectors that are up here. So it looks like we have two connectors right here. Also gonna do the same on the right side as well as the left. Um, from what it looked like on some other videos, it's a little bit complicated to put back together if you've never done it before. So um, as many pictures as you can take, the better it's gonna be. All right, so before we start unbolting some stuff, we're just going to start unplugging some wiring. So here is your um, cable for your dash. So just take a little flathead. This guy will come off. We're just gonna let this hang right here. Um, there are these two cables that wrap around. So we're just gonna take a little flathead. Once again, pull that guy out. Um, same with this white one. And remember, we took pictures, so um, you know, we have a good idea of where these go when we're ready to put them back together. So, yep, those are off. So, white one was a little bit tough. <laughs> um, so, we're just going to let these hang for now. Um, it looks like there's one more cable right here that won't pull through. Um, and when I look on the left side of the bike, um, it looks like it is our left turn signal. Um, plug so we're just going to Pull it through so we have all the cables hanging out right here. These are going to hang right here um, This one right here Let's see this guy goes kind of deep so we might wait on that But I can unplug it from the left side. So let me get you a view of that So the last cable that is connected uh, running from left to right when you're sitting on the bike um, connects right here so uh, it's going to be a little bit hard to film just because of how tight it is but when you get to this process you can feel and find where it's connecting um, it's just a little push-in clip so let's get this connector real quick so we can uh, pull this out hang it off the front of the nose So just like that, we got that cable out. Um, so now pretty much everything is able to be pulled through to the front of the cowling. Um, and we have nothing that is crisscrossing from left to right on the nose. All right, so now that all the cables are disconnected, we're gonna take a five Allen socket, loosen these bolts. There's going to be two up front and also two right back here underneath the, um, your dash. So now we're just going to get the two right underneath the dash. Um, I don't think I need to show it. It's pretty much right there. So it's going to undo one on each side. All right, so it looks like um, these two Phillip um, screw bolts do need to come off. So there's one right here. And then there is one tucked away down here. So just take a Phillips head, unscrew these guys. I mean, I assume they need to come out. I'm just kind of, like I said, learning as I'm going with this, because I've never done it before. Um, so once you kind of start tugging away on different parts of the cow, uh, of the nose, you start to see, okay, well, this is biting, this is biting, uh, well, not biting, but, um, you know, not budging. So you kind of get an idea of maybe what you need to remove. Um, and that's pretty much how I'm doing this job so far. So I'm gonna do the um, other side as well. Just unscrew the two Phillips, and then we'll see what's next. So kind of hard to get on camera, but I found one more screw for the front nose, which is actually right here. You kind of have to lift up some wires, but you can see it, I think. Um, yeah, now you can see it. Um, this one, 
So if you don't have one of these, it's just a little um, it's like screwdriver bit uh, ratchet. Very handy in tight places. Um, this one's from Molework. I got it on Amazon. It's like, I don't know, nine bucks or something. I'll leave this uh, link in the description. But for this guy, it's super tight. Um, so having something like this, where it's a ratchet, and I can unscrew this, is super handy. So in total, on the left side, there are three Phillips head bolts that we are removing. Now this guy just wants to spin. So I'm just going to take the bit, see if I can get my hand in there, unscrew this. Yep, that guy's ready to come out. Also, another good tool for the shop, a little bit of little magnet, um, just to make sure it doesn't fall down into a spot that you can't get. So I have a magnet here, and this guy's almost out. Caught that guy with the magnet, so three on this side. Now we're gonna get, I'm gonna do the other side, but at least you get the idea. And then we'll move on to the next part. So as I'm looking with the movement, with this entire piece, it looks like we are gonna have to remove that fastener, which is a four millimeter. So looking down in, I also see that this entire piece is held in with some kind of push rivet. Um, we're just gonna take the side panel off real quick just to make sure we're getting um, everything uh, exposed so we can see kind of what's holding this front piece on because it looks like the only thing that's holding it um, any longer is just pieces in the back. It seems like once this is all um, you know disconnected on each side, this whole part should really just pull off really just kind of held in from these bottom um, and back sections right now. So we're going to move the side panels real quick and uh, yeah, take it from there. To remove the side panels, um, we do have to also remove the inner fender liners. So there's one uh, on the surrounding of the oil cooler. We got one right up here. There's also one right here. And then this should, uh, pretty much with these you want to push forward. So we're going to push forward a little bit. And now we can start popping these out, which are really what's holding this in place. So kind of pull it away from um, the oil cooler as well. Once you pop it all the way down, um, the only thing you need to do is just tilt it sideways and once again push forward. And then your side fairing is off. Now this is the right part of the bike. So um, that fastener I was talking about, which is holding this part in place right here, was right underneath, right over your coolant reservoir. So we're gonna pop this guy out, put that down to the side. So now this part's pretty free, it's good to go. And we're gonna have to do the same on the right. Left side fairings, um, Pretty much the exact same process. Uh, the only thing is there is one more push pin way up in the back here. If you put your hand kind of all the way in the back up here, um, you'll feel that last push pin. So um, once again, the one on the um, oil cooler guard, the one on the side right down at the bottom of your radiator on the inner fender liner. Okay, we got that one out. Uh, there's gonna be one halfway, pull this guy out, and then we got to get the one way in the back here. So we got this one, put that off to the side. Now for this one, um, same as the other side, we have to take off the exhaust 
Um, heat shields right here. This is a five millimeter. So we're gonna take this guy out, just leave it off to the side. Um, I like to put bolts right back where I know that they came out from. This makes the install easier. Um, the rest of this is all your four millimeter um, snap pins. Now this fairing is only being held by the inner liners and that bottom section once again. So once again I'm going to be pulling out the inner fender liner pretty much all the way up that I can. Um, the oil cooler, I'm also going to push that um, out a little bit. Now slide this fo forward just like last time. Now it'll start kind of moving around a little bit more easily. Um, snap the bottom one out and then we slid it forward once again on this bottom section and your left fairing is off. So for the left side, there's two push pins right here. Just gonna pop them out. I'm not exactly sure um, if they are affecting us, but um, just something I noticed. Let's see, give it a little tug. What else do we have going on? Uh, so next, we're just gonna remove these four millimeter uh, bolts from here. The other side is pretty much ready to go. All right, guys, so this is kind of a difficult shot. Um, but we do need to pull this guy out right here. There's a fuse box also that um, you need to unhook from the fastener because it is attached to this main wiring harness that we're gonna pull out. Um, this is the fuse box right here. I just disconnected it from that fastener. All right, so I was hoping to get this off without having to remove the inner trim panels, um, but it looks like that is not the case. So on both sides, pop this, um, Pop rivet right here, Just pull it through. Um, I already did the other side. Um, and remember, these are JIS um, screw rivets. They are not Phillips. If you use a Phillips, it could strip. So um, I picked these JIS ones up on Amazon pretty cheap. So if you have a Japanese bike, they're worth having. Fortunately, these things strip like crazy, and they're super annoying when they strip. <laughs> so we pulled that one out here. I'm going to pull out the one on the other side, and there's also one more push pin here in the middle. So remember also with the JIS, don't pull. Um, sorry, don't push in when you're screwing. Um, you really want to just uh, put the lightest bit of pressure, or else you're just going to keep pushing the threads back up into the rivet. So with these JIS ones, just gently turn them and then um, they will slowly unturn. And then uh, this one in the middle. And then with the R1, it's kind of interesting how these inner fender liners work. Um, they overlap right here. So, yep, there you go. Um, <laughs> the right side covers the left side. And now this guy is removed and the one on the other side. So I think the last thing that's holding this in are these two fours, which are mounting the headlight, um, or your high beam, I'm sorry. So we're just gonna take these off. Just two fours right here. Looks like the headlight is loosening up. All right, so next, what's holding this on is this vacuum line. So it has a little clip mount, and we're just gonna pull this out a little bit. And then just disconnect this line right here, shove this back around into the opening. So this is just going to hang a little bit loose for now. And it looks like everything is coming out. All right, so there is your nose piece. Um, looks like everything that we did was exactly what needed to be done. Um, pretty complicated, I'm not going to lie. But now this is off, uh, still, got, still got some more work to do. All right, so we just wheeled the bike off of the chalk so we could turn the um, levers, get access to these bolts. So these are, let me see, fives? 
Yep. So these are five millimeter bolts. So these did have red Loctite. Um, I'd suggest when you put it back on, at least put blue. Um, I think red sometimes a little extreme, but I'm gonna put blue on these when I put them back. Um, and now I'm gonna go to the other side and unscrew those. All right, so now that the back four screws are off, should be able to kind of just wiggle this out of place. So lift up on one of the sides when you are removing it and you'll be able to get one of the sides off and then lift up on the other and this entire piece will come off. So now we can see, I don't know if you can pick it up, but your flap is actually, nope, can't see it. But it's in there, I can see it. <laughs> so let's take this to the workbench, we'll split it open, um, just a couple bolts, move the flap, and then uh, reassemble. All right guys, excuse this messy workbench. None of this is mine, I would not be all right with this, but when you share a garage, uh, this is sometimes what happens, and <laughs> we just have to do our best. So, um, anyhow, to remove this, uh, like I said, this is actually aluminum. So um, you're gonna need a five millimeter Allen, a four millimeter Allen, and a three. Um, we're not gonna wanna remove the grill that's in here. This protects your um, air filter from getting anything, you know, crazy. But we're just gonna use a four up front here like they did use red Loctite. Is it red? Come on. Oh, they actually used blue. Surprise, I've never, actually no Loctite. I don't know, maybe they're just really snug. Um, this middle one up top here is gonna be a three. So, just crack that guy open. Um, just keep these in order, so I uh, think that'll also be helpful. So front, middle, and then underneath there is one, and that looks like a four. So looks like we're actually not going to need that five. So there's this one right here. Okay. And these might all be the same length, but just to be sure, I'm going to put this one in the middle. Just so we don't mix these up. There's a lot of parts to this job, I swear. I've never done a job like this where it's been <laughs> so many freaking parts. It's crazy. Um, so we're going to unscrew this. Just screw it to the left. And pop it up. Um, it's catching on that flapper. So let's see. little rubber seal right here. Looks like it was um, actually mounted on, I don't know. Neither side, it mounts on both. So, I'm just gonna open this up. There's another rubber seal right here in between the two of them. Um, and this actually, uh, let me, I'll show you in a second. Let me just get this guy out. So, here is your flapper. That's it, right there. This little freaking thing. We go through all this trouble to remove this. Absolutely insane. Um, so let's see. So if you don't know what this does, basically when you're like 20% throttle, 30% throttle, this stays closed. Um, so there's a very short or, or small, basically inlet right here. Um, not sure if you can see this on camera, but it basically when you're like zero to 20% or whatever the figure is, this is all the air you're getting because it's closing off this top section. So the reason we remove this is so we get air through both channels. Um, we can't remove these because they are metal. Um, so just having this valve 
with um, with you know it not opening and closing based on your throttle position. Um, you know you're going to get full air in your system, which can equal higher power when you tune and all that stuff. So um, there is this rubber sleeve right here. I really don't know if you guys can catch that, um, but definitely make sure that that goes back in between the two pieces. Um, so I'm working on that right now. There's also one on the bottom here between the two pieces. So the bottom one's good. The middle one's good. I think. I'm just going to feel. Yep. The middle one is good there. And looks like the bottom one is sealing properly. Um, now, I forgot where this guy went. Oh, this guy goes up top. <laughs> so just going to separate it a little bit. Make sure this guy goes in the middle. And then kind of wiggle it up and down. Make sure each lip um, gets inside of the little rubber seals. You can also flip it upside down, make sure your seal's good. I can tell right here that um, this back part needs to be fixed. There we go. So now I can see all the way down the tube and this one is good. So there's there's three rubber seals. Um, top, middle, and bottom. And they are all good in line. So there's not going to be any um, leaking of air into um, the outside so that's good um, what I wanted to explain let me put one bolt um, from the so we're gonna do a small one up top just so I can uh, explain to you kind of how this works so and just screw this guy back in right up here they were on there pretty snug so I'm gonna return them to being pretty snug. <laughs> That's good. Um, okay, now that these are together, I can show you. Um, so basically, this is a vacuum um, I don't know, solenoid pump, whatever you want to call it. And this hooked on to here, right here on the um, onto the flapper. So right when this was hooked on to here, um, vacuum pressure, I believe from the motor, I'm not exactly sure how it happens. Maybe this guy right here um, just basically like lifts it up and then like tilts it down. So when you remove the flapper, just remember that this guy, you just need to slide it out from there. Um, if you don't put this back in, you're going to have um, a vacuum leak. So um, we're going to put this back in, but this isn't going to obstruct any airflow pretty much. Um, it's just this little tiny thing. Um, but the easiest way to prevent a vacuum leak is just get this little guy back in there. So um, let's see, what is holding us down? All right, so because I can't get it in the original position, I'm just going to pull out this vacuum line right here. And then I'm going to screw it in. So um, from what it is stock, basically line it up this way where the hose is pointing to the right. You'll feel the tabs up and down. You can only twist it to the right and then it'll stop. And then run this hose back down to this little plug right here. And then you're good. You're not gonna have any vacuum problems as long as you hook this part back up to uh, um, the main wiring harness. So we're gonna make sure we do that and get these few bolts back in. But yeah, that's pretty much it. All that work for that stupid piece of plastic. Absolutely incredible. <laughs> so let me get these uh, these these bolts back in there. All right. So now for the reassembly. So just straighten out your wheel. Um, remember, we're going to go from the top down. So angle up. Got one side on, then the other side slid on. Let's make sure those holes are lined up. Yep, it's pretty easy to do. Um, not too bad. So we're gonna put blue Loctite 
on the um, two bolts on each side. We're not going to use red. Uh, so let's let's get to it. Definitely make sure you get these uh, started by hand. They might feel a little firm just because of the the amount of red Loctite that they used, but let's make sure they're seated before you start wrenching. This is aluminum, it's soft. You could cross thread it very easily. So I'm gonna leave these a little bit loose while I work on the other two, just in case they have to maneuver it back and forth. Um, it's always a good thing to do until you get everything, you know, snugged up. All right, so the bike is back on the lift and we got um, everything ready to put the nose back on. So uh, basically we're gonna be taking the front nose and sliding it back on. Uh, basically what, exactly what we did, but in reverse. So um, yeah, it might be helpful to see kind of how everything goes in reverse as well because we're gonna have to start with um, the side light, um, feeding the wires through, hooking up the uh, vacuum hose and um, yeah pretty much returning it back to where it was. So I'm gonna start by taking the uh, nose section and basically starting to feed some of these wires through. So this entire harness went through this top section right here. So we're going to feed all these through. So there's your, your dash, there's your vacuum line. Um, looks like this little guy. I'll have to check where he goes. I'm not sure yet. I think he goes up here. But just kind of feeding the wires through, getting it ready to push it farther back onto the bike. Um, now, now that we have the wires pretty much through some of the openings, um, we're going to slide this up and over the vacuum pump. And the rubber on the actual intake right here, there's these two um, pointed out pieces. So when you get it farther back, just make sure those line up. Uh, you're going to be kind of colliding with some wires, so just be patient. It's kind of one thing that I'm not that good at, to be honest with you, but you got to learn it. <laughs> so... Um, some things I just realized, this vacuum line, which is the gray, so I'm going to pull this out actually. So this vacuum line actually just kind of sneaks up, sneaks, sneaks up right under here. So this gray line that comes from the main harness, uh, just plug it right back in there. So now we're going to start where we were just again and start feeding everything through. So just kind of, yeah, just take your time. Um, the rubber on the opening of the intake actually slides into um, the bottom of the intake on the bottom side. Now right now I'm lining up the top of the rubber um, intake to the um, holes in the front nose just to make sure that they're sealing properly and those are good so make sure like I said these two right up here these are good to go and they're lined up and the bottom of it is actually slides into um, the bottom of the nose um, pretty much right underneath it so that's all lined up let's see okay all right, so we got that done. Um, this line, let's see. So I'm just gonna kind of start 
getting cables where I remember um, where they were. So I know these were hanging out. Um, this was also coming out through um, this opening right here. So this white one off to the side. So just kind of feeding them through. Um, one thing that we're going to start with right now is screwing in our right light. So if you can remember the right headlight fit right up here. It's like one of the tabs moved a little bit. So just moving it back. And there's actually even a fitting hole right here on the headlight, which is nice. So you get that fitting hole. There's also a fitting hole um, right back here. So um, that's nice as well. So let's get so let's get the headlight screwed in. These are those two black four millimeter bolts. Those guys are on there, don't need to be too tight. So um, if you remember from this side as well, this was a push rivet. So got that right here, ready to go. Just gonna pop this guy in. All right, that's secure. So now that we have the right headlight and um, some connection to the back part of the fairing, definitely a lot more stability. It's gonna be easier to work with. So let's move on to the other side. So before we go on to the other side, I actually wanted to work on a couple cables in the middle. Um, so I think we can get our dash hooked up right now. So it's just this big um, connector right here, the, the uh, clip tabs at the top. So. Let's just get this big guy out of the way first. So just plug it in, you'll hear a click. Make sure that the rubber grommet goes around the entire opening. Don't want any water getting in there, that's for sure. All right, so now that this guy's good, uh, we could start connecting these, but I wanna get the main um, like structure in place. So we're gonna put these two uh, bolts in. They did have red Loctite um, when I removed them, but we're gonna do blue. So let me do that real quick. So just center this guy over the holes. Make sure, just screw them in by hand. There's a lot of Loctite on these from the factory with that red. So it's kind of hard to find when it's biting. So just be careful. Remember, you can always go left and hear a click, or you can feel a little um, like skip over the threads. That usually means that you're going in at the right angle. So this one needs to be lined up. This one's good as well. You can also tell if they're uh, cross-threading if you can't screw them in by hand. Um, if you're cross-threading, usually hand strength is not going to allow you to <laughs> um, tear up, you know, a bolt this big. So I'm also going to do the two inside that are the same size as these bolts. You can see the back of them um, right here. So I'm going to get working on these. Blue Loctite once again. Not going to go all the way down on these just yet. I want to get the back section in as well. All right, so now that the two uh, back bolts that are the same size as these fives, are good. I'm just going to finish up the front real quick. So as I said previously, I really just want to get the core components screwed in first before we start doing a lot of electrical, electrical work. So we can see with this piece right here, just push it out or in a little bit. I'm sorry. And then there is a little guiding um, plastic pin right there to line it up. Um, you're also going to see this push clip right there that we um, pushed in to remove it previously. So I just pulled with my finger, that guy popped it out. That uh, This little plastic pin lined everything up. So now I can put back these four millimeter uh, bolts. And everything is pretty much lined up. So now that we have this section all finished up, 
There are two plastic push rivets right here, which line up these pieces. So just gonna insert one here, insert the other back here. These two are good. All right, so let's work a little bit more on the front uh, wiring. This actually pulls out just a little bit more to expose these connectors and then this will have a little bit more slack. The one with, uh, kind of looks like a triangle. Um, it's a very small, um, small connector. So that's actually your right turn signal connector. We're gonna go under these two and over to the turn signal connector, which is right here on the lip. And my, I don't have turn signals or mirrors plugged in. So I'm just snugging it to this connector for now. It's just this little uh, manila connector right here. Now, um, I think this part's pretty self-explanatory. So um, your white connector is gonna go into white. Um, the black connector is gonna go into black. So these three are complete. So we can kind of tuck them away down here. So this one right here is actually the one um, where it plugs in this way and you'll see it. It's just very hard to get it on camera, but um, it's like right on the inside in this area. It plugs in this way. Um, there's a connector going this way. It's mounted. Um, hard for me to get that angle on camera. So I'm just gonna slide this guy down in, kind of tuck it along the same line that all the other um, cables are running down. It's kind of also hard to plug in because there's not much room with your fingers. There we go. So everything up here looks good to go. Just double checking that um, the dash grommet is nice and snug. Vacuum hose, this guy is twisted all the way right. It's connected at the bottom. Um, everything else is connected as of the moment. So one way that you can make sure that a lot of this wiring is uh, good, everything's working, um, check your dash, Does everything look good, you can see it. Okay, we have our DRLs. Um, you could also, I don't think you can turn on the high beams when the engine's off, nope. So you could also turn your engine on, um, check to make sure both lights are working even though we did not disconnect them. Um, and to make sure you don't have a vacuum leak, one thing you can do also is turn the engine on and make sure that you have a good idle. Um, if you did have a va vacuum leak, basically um, your idle is going to be super high and it'll be pretty obvious that something is not right. All right, so looks like we have those three screws, those Phillips screws that we need to um, get in. This is uh, actually your DRL right here. Uh, your left one so there's one screw here and then that one that was kind of hard to get to down here that I use that small little um, ratchet wrench to so one down here one over here and then one here so for the one up top just remember it's the one with the washer um, you are screwing into plastic so hopefully you don't need to do this that many times <laughs> looks like I might need to use a stubby Actually, no, I just got clearance. Okay. Yeah, so the one with the washer, screw it on to where there's the rubber grommets on each side. Give it some good tension. Don't overdo it. And then the other two that look like this are going to go on the side of the DRL and down here on the DRL. We just got the three screws screwed in to connect uh, this part with your lights. Uh, I'm just gonna do the same on the other side real quick and then we'll keep tackling this side. All right, well this is one of the harder shots to get, but um, before we put on our fenders, we need to put in our fender um, liners or our fairing liners, whatever you wanna call them. Um, definitely go with the left side first because the right side actually overlaps this side. So um, the main one to get in is actually the one that's back here, the one that's like really hard to reach. 
So what we want to do is place it up in here. Um, we're also going to have to slide this little fuse box, which I talked about um, earlier during the disassembly, um, into this little slot because this liner holds that fuse box. All right, looks like that's good. All right, so basically just make sure this um, little front part is going up under the lip right there. Your JIS uh, screw is lined up right there. And then, um, yeah, we're pretty much just going to install this back plastic rivet for now, which holds it, it, holds it in place. So you can kind of see through here uh, where the holes line up. So I'm just gonna put my hand back there, get this push rivet in, that's secure. And now we're gonna go to the other side. Uh, like I said, the other side overlaps this side. So you wanna do um, the left uh, inner liner first and then the other side. Uh, but before we move on to the other side, I wanna get this uh, GIS uh, screw fastener done. So we're just going to line it up, put that guy in there, grab our GIS screwdriver, um, I will leave a link in the description uh, where I got these on Amazon. Uh, I think they're a must-have if you do have a Japanese bike, as every Japanese bike has these, um, and you won't strip them. So um, I've stripped them plenty of times with regular Phillips screwdrivers, and now I don't have to anymore. So it's definitely a nice relief. <laughs> so now when you're working on this side, um, the main goal is just to get this overlapped on from um, overlapping the other side and the center uh, grommet as well. Um, we're not going to do really anything over here. Uh, it's not necessary at the moment. So I'm um, going to take it, slide it, make sure it's overlapping the other one, push it forward into the nose. Come on. Got to remember that the rubber and both layers of this, um, you know, fender liner is fitting in there. So just want to make sure that you get them all in correctly. Okay, that's overlapping. Uh, first, we're going to do the push pin that um, centers them both in the middle. So taking our push rivet right there, pop it in. All right, now they're joined together. So now we need to do our um, JIS uh, screw rivet right here. So I just want to make sure this lines up. There we go. Take that screwdriver that I mentioned before. Slightly go in. No pressure. Once it's flush, you're good to go. There's no over tightening. They don't tighten actually. Um, and what we can also do is mount um, this inner, or sorry, this top um, push rivet right here as well, just to keep it from flopping. And we can do it on the other side in the same position. Now that we have everything lined up. So come on. So I'm going to go to the other side, just man maneuver it a little bit, but we're just putting this other rivet in right here. Cool. So um, to put the fenders back on um, we want to wait to put any of the push pins in because um, basically we need to snap it in with these little clips um, before we put these in it'll make the job a lot easier so um, what I always recommend when you put on your R1 fairings um, definitely look at the bottom piece right here there's two tabs right here so line them up and slide them backwards um, that's going to probably be the easiest time you'll, you'll get to line these up is when um, your fairing is not completely mounted. So we got those pushed back. Now we can start working on um, the front and uh, the nose and the top and the side. So remember, now that this is all lined up, um, we're not going to line up the inner liner just yet. Um, we're going to take out the top one just to give us some more flexibility 
with the inner liner, um, even though we installed it earlier, um, taking it out will give us some more play. Um, but basically, just take this top portion and we're just going to pull it up and forward, and then just slide it back, and you're in. So now with the fender liners, um, just kind of go along with your hand, make sure everything lines up flush, kind of with this crease, you can feel it with your hands right there. So everything is mounted properly. So now let's go back in with the push pin. So push pin up top. That one is good. Push pin down here on the side. So that one is right here. Push pin somewhere kind of halfway right here. Just this one for the oil cooler. And now you can start with uh, your push clips and your five millimeter Allen and um, tighten up the, the fairings um, to the bike. I don't think I really need to go into that. It's pretty easy, but that's how you get the right side on. I'll do the left side real quick with the inner liner just to show you. And then that's gonna wrap up the video. All right, so once again, we're gonna start with the two pieces on the bottom. So right here, get them in. Slide them back. Looks like they're good. Okay. So now we're just gonna um, lightly place it. Make sure that um, we pop in the side of the oil cooler. There we go. There we go. Just kind of use your hand. Pop it up. Okay. So now, once again, we're gonna pull up so it goes over, and then just pull back. So just checking the fender liner, making sure everything's lined up the way it should be. Yep, everything looks good. Everything's pushed back, remember? So we're gonna take this for the oil cooler. Keep this one in place. Take the other push pin for the bottom right here. Another one for the middle. Well, now that your fairings are all um, finished up, last thing to do is put on your windscreen. So um, with the windscreen itself, there are two push grommets right here. Um, and then uh, these actually slide into here. They kind of pop in, so you kind of have to um, maneuver them in a little bit. But these also go down the center holes. Um, other than that, putting this on, taking it off, is not that difficult. And there's also two uh, little screws, or bolts, I mean, with fasteners on each side. Um, so I'm just going to slide it on for you to show you, and then uh, we're going to wrap it up. So I'm aiming at the grommets right here with uh, this right here. Also, you can, you know, uh, line it up with the bottom portion right here. But I'm going to push from the top, line up the mirror um, mounts. Push from the top, okay. It's in with the grommet. Now for these, just kind of, um, you can see where the tab kind of bends. So you can kind of go out and then in, and then they just pop in. And like I said, two bolts on each side. Um, they just look like this, these little silver ones. And they will mount on the back. And uh, you're pretty much done. Um, yeah, I'm gonna leave mine off because I still have uh, another video to make and um, some other work to do, but that was uh, how to take off an intake flap. <laughs> All right guys, so that's gonna do it for this video. I'm not gonna lie, this was uh, probably the deepest that I've been in the R1. Um, probably one of the toughest jobs I've done on the R1. But, um, you know, I learned a lot and I really hope that if you're doing this install that um, the steps and, you know, the explanations and um, all the angles that I got for you were super helpful. Um, you know, don't be intimidated by big jobs like this. Um, it's probably easier to say than done. But for me, at least, um, you know, once I got in there, once I started seeing how things went together, 
you know, it was a lot easier, um, especially just like when you take off your fairings for the first time. Um, you know, it's kind of a scary thing because there's a lot of different areas on how to fasten them and, you know, what to remove. But once you do it, it's so much easier. Um, also, the more you learn your bike, the, the more you're going to save with service, maintenance, labor. Um, labor costs down here in Southern California, it's like 150 an hour, 175 an hour, depending on the shop. Um, I've, I've even heard higher. So doing this job myself not only taught me more about my bike, but saved me some money. Um, and also added some performance to my bike, uh, especially when I get it tuned. Any tools that I used in the video or anything that I mentioned, um, I will leave in, a, in the description below. Definitely drop a like. This is like a five hour job um, and I wanted to make sure, you know, I got every little bit for you guys uh, and explained it the best that I could. So drop a like. This is a difficult video to make, but we got it done. Um, if you're new, subscribe. Um, you know, I definitely try to put out uh, the best content out there that I can, um, especially educational or working on bikes. Um, we also have, you know, some fun riding as well too. So, um, other than that, if you have any questions, drop them in the comment section. I reply to every comment on my video. Love chatting with you guys. Um, and that's pretty much it. So, uh, stay tuned. We got another video that's, uh, coming up and, um, yeah, ride safe guys. And we'll see you next time.